So for um, number 15, we are taking the area between these curves and we're revolving about the line x is equal to 2. So I've drawn um, y is equal to x cubed, which is the first line. Um, so we have y is equal to x cubed. y is equal to 0, which is just the, um, it's just the x axis. And then we have x is equal to 1. So I have drawn these. Um, yeah, I have drawn these out. And we can see that the area between these curves is this section over here. Now, we're taking this and we're revolving about the line um, x is equal to 2. So, this is the line where we're revolving this, yeah. Now, uh, to revolve it here, we're going to have our disks. Um, and these disks are going to go like so. This is their, their, um, their width. And when we revolve them... They're going to look like this, um, like a bunch of rings, and then we're going to stack them up across the y-axis. So when we stack up all these areas, they're going to give us a volume. Um, now, this is, the drawing is pretty bad here, but um, yeah, this is our, our ring that we're going to sum up. Um, now, basically, we, we are going to stack them up across the y-axis, so we're integrating um, this with respect to y. Um, so if we're integrating this with respect to y, we do have to express these curves as, um, as functions of y, right? So um, the, let's see. So the upper function, um, we, we have that y, um, y cubed is equal to, um, to x. So that's the, the outer ring, that's the radius of the outer ring. Um, now the, the radius of the, of, the, um, of the smaller one is just the curve uh, x is equal to x is equal to 1 right? Um, no, no mystery there. So here, uh, we, we can see that our, our disk, our ring rather, is made up of two disks, right? And so to get this ring, we need the bigger disk, which is R1, minus the smaller disk, minus R2. So A1 minus A2. Um, so A1... To get a1, we um, we need to get this distance here, and maybe I'm going to put that in a different color. The distance from x is equal to two, all the way, all the way to here, right? Um, and now let's think about how we do this because when we are integrating with respect to y, it's like we are taking the the height uh, height of two. So we're taking this height that goes all the way from here to here, and then we're taking a height of two, and then we're subtracting, we're subtracting um, the blue height, because all we want is from here all the way to here. So we're going two minus the height of the blue curve. So um, let me just erase this so that you guys can can see it properly. And if you if you flip this around in your mind, you're gonna see that it's it's two minus the blue curve to get this uh, this orange arrow. And the reason that is is because um, the the orange arrow the the height of it is always going to be changing, right? Um, and it changes as a in this case as a function of y. So here we have um, pi pi r squared, and remember that the radius here is just two. 2 minus y cubed, and all of this squared. Um, and similarly, a 2, uh, in this case, is going to be, let's see, let's draw this orange arrow again, but now this one is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just going to go from 2 all the way to 1, because it goes from the line uh, 2 to 1, so this one's really easy. It doesn't change at all. It's a fixed, it's a fixed radius. 
the only radius that changes is the outer radius. So in this case, it's just 2 minus 1 squared. Um, and then when we expand this, let me just foil that out. So a1 is equal to pi. Um, let's see, this is y uh, 2 thirds and then minus 4y to the 1 third. And then um, that is plus 4. And a2 is just pi. Uh, 2 minus 1 is just 1, so 1 squared. Therefore, a1 minus a2 is equal to pi. I'm going to put it outside. And then we have y2 thirds minus 4y to the 1 third. And then plus 4 plus 4 minus 1. Um, that gives us plus 3. Okay, so we are um, we're nearly ready to integrate the, actually, yeah, we're totally ready to integrate because we can see here that the bound, boundaries, it goes from zero all the way to this point of intersection. And they intersect at the point one, right? Um, because if we set these curves equal to each other, we have y to the one third is equal to one. And we can clearly see here that the only solution to this is when y is equal to one. Um, so our integral it goes from 0 all the way to 1 on the y-axis because we're st stacking these up on the y-axis. So we are ready to integrate. Therefore, it's the integral from 0 to 1 of a1 minus a2. So I'm going to put the pi outside because it's a constant. So pi times. Uh, and then the this is our integral, a1 minus a2. So that is y to the 2 thirds minus 4y to the 1 third third plus three and then times dy so this is equal to pi times let's see um, when we integrate this we are going to have um, y and then we we add plus one um, so that is five over three um, times sorry that should be times three fifths Times three, three fifths, and then that is going to give us minus four. Um, when we integrate this, that is y uh, four thirds times three fourths, and then plus three y. Um, so these cancel out. Therefore, this is equal to pi um, times three fifths y to the five thirds minus 3y to the 4 thirds plus 3y, um, evaluated all the way from, from 0 to 1. Um, so when we plug in the lower boundary, th that's going to disappear because all these terms are going to go to 0. So we just have to worry about the upper boundary. So it's pi. And then here we have, let's see, um, when we plug in 1, that's just 3 fifths. Uh, and then minus 3. Uh, minus 3 plus 3, yeah. So this cancels out. That is going to give us um, 3 pi over 5 cubic units. And let me zoom out for you guys to see. And yeah, that is the volume that we get when we revolve this disk about the line x is equal to 2.